Awesome. Well, it is 10.02, so we should probably get started because I know everyone is really excited to learn um, all about how to crush marketing and compete and really stand at the top. Awesome. So as we're going through this webinar, I want to remind you guys that at any point when you have a question, you know, feel free to go to the questions box and type in a question. We've got Reggie, our um, marketing manager who's standing by and answering all the questions as they come in. So before we get started, I'd like to tell you just a little bit about Service Titan. Um, Service Titan is an all-in-one, all-inclusive home services management software made to deliver extraordinary customer experiences and increase profit. So our co-founders, Aaron Bahe, actually started Service Titan about five years ago. Both of their fathers are residential contractors and they grew up in the business. They asked their sons to help them identify a good software, a good solution to help manage their businesses. They couldn't find one for their dads, so naturally the two sons came together and decided to build one and create one. So we really want to know all of, we want to make sure that we can empower all businesses to know all the customers with a click of a button. So that means CRM, analytics, marketing, everything. We want to do everything under the sun that we possibly can to help you guys generate more leads, close more sales, book more appointments, grow the revenue, cut costs, streamline operations, deliver an amazing customer experience, and effortless track and compare performance. We want to be able to automate processes, best practices, to really give you that better marketing visibility. And lastly, have a powerful visual selling tool for your technicians. Essentially what we're trying to say is we want to make life so easy for you to be able to grow and manage your business. So with that said, you know, let's talk about today's webinar. This is what we're focusing on today. In the next hour, you will learn the types of marketing and advertising campaigns that actually work from two awesome individuals who have done this, who have, um, who have been in the industry, who have worked in marketing and advertising business development, who run the businesses. Um, you'll learn the marketing and advertising campaigns that don't work and, and why we should avoid them. You'll learn the right way to measure ROI. Um, you'll learn how much you should actually be spending to acquire a new customer. You'll learn how to determine an appropriate marketing budget. And this is what I'm most excited about because I think this is really the bread and butter. You'll learn creative marketing and advertising hacks. So non-traditional things that you can do really to just spice up your marketing campaigns. I think this is going to be phenomenal. So I'd love to introduce you guys to two of our amazing guests and panelists. Um, so the first one is Andrew Zakoff. Andrew is the former Director of Marketing and Business Development at Pikeworks Services. So Andrew actually started at Pikeworks Services as a helper and worked his way up to the current role. Um, he doubled leads in just under a year. He implemented customer service, sales KPIs, um, and he's fully in, implemented industry-leading levels of accuracy, integrity, and transparency with the Pipework Services data. So currently, he has transitioned to Enterprise Implementation Project Manager here at Service Titan. So we're really excited to welcome him to the Service Titan company and um, you know, really learn from his expertise and his time as Marketing and Business Development Director at Pipeworks. Andrew, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Of course. Um, our next special guest is Tom Howard. Tom is the current president of Lee's Air Conditioning, Heating, and Building Performance. Now, Tom has a wealth of experience, um, and I can't wait to, to learn so much from Tom. He's created and led a team to redesign marketing plans that generated leads, maintained closure rates, reduced marketing costs by 90%. He has reduced overheads, overhead costs enough to post a net profit percentage that was four times higher than the leading industry average. He's led SEO projects that increased web traffic by 100% in less than a year. If anybody knows marketing, it's, it's Tom. He's done a lot. So really, really excited to have Tom. Tom, welcome. Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. All right, so does anybody recognize this stool? Before we get started, I just want to make sure that we've all seen this stool. Um, you're probably like, well, what, what is this stool? This looks like a stool that sits in the corner of the office. Like, nobody uses this stool. This is actually really important in the world of marketing. And so the stool is often also 
um, regarded as the three buckets of marketing. So you've got online, you've got offline, you've got referrals. And as we talk about marketing, I think it's important to keep in mind the three different buckets of marketing, the three legs of the stool, right? Um, to have a stool, to be able to use a stool, it has to kind of be balanced. Um, so as we're thinking about marketing, let's keep in mind online, offline, and referrals. With that said, I'd love to be able to jump into the question so we can actually hear from our experts. Um, so Andrew, I'd love to be able to start with you. What are some of the best marketing and advertising campaigns that you've done? For us, one of the best ones is definitely home shows. We found that the cost can be relatively low and if you have good deals running at the time and you're at the right show, you're going to be in front of the right clients. And having that face-to-face -face chance for marketing is just a rare opportunity. If you have a billboard, there's no chance to explain it or talk about it. So being able to see the customer and really pitch your company and your product in person, we found was a fantastic campaign. Awesome. So home shows. So how often did you guys go to these home shows? And were many of them local that you went to or were some, you know, a little farther away? How accessible are these for our customers? We started with just the most local of local home shows. So by being in the local um, Chamber of Commerce, they'll have an expo just for the town that we were in. We went to that, so our cost was I think like $250 just to be in the show. We ended up selling about $15,000 worth of equipment at the show. Wow. So that's a pretty quality uh, return. Once we saw that worked, we decided to try and expand the home show part of our business. So we started kind of going for bigger shows, maybe a little bit more expensive, a little further away. But there's just so many different types of home shows. Uh, even for weddings, um, they have people that they just got married, they're buying a house, and they need something. So there's a lot of weird ways to get in. Realtors is a good one. So any kind of realty home show, you can make connections with realtors, because obviously when they're buying and selling homes, certain tasks need to be taken care of. On top of that, really, most of the ones oriented towards home services, usually anyone at that home show is someone truly interested in buying. People don't waste their time going in person to just browse. And they do that online nowadays. So if someone's there usually and you have the right people pitching your company and product, you can convert a fair number of sales. Hey, that's awesome. That's such great feedback. So it sounds like, you know, um, our customers, you know, we can get involved in the local community with our Chamber of Commerce. Um, we can, you know, kind of diversify and we don't have to put our eggs in one basket. We can start, you know, making connections with folks in the wedding industry, um, folks in real estate, um, and other, you know, specific home services shows. That's awesome, you know, the diversification. All these folks are, um, are looking for certain types of products. Great. I love that. Well, thank you so much for sharing. That's very tactical. That's something that, you know, our audience members can really start doing. Um, Tom, I'd love to hear from you. Um, what has worked for you guys at Lee's Air? Um, you know, Andrew and I were talking about this before the, uh, before the call, and we, we talked about how marketing campaigns tend to work, including home shows, when there's something different being offered. And I think you know, you've got to find that point of differentiation, and then you can make a lot of different marketing campaigns work. For instance, you know, some people, we used to go to a home show, and, and it was terrible. And we look at guys like Andrew and say, why in the world is Andrew, you know, making so much money, and we're not? I mean, we're doing the home show thing. Here we are. We have our booth. We have everything going on. And um, what it came down to is that we weren't, you know, bringing out a, a point of differentiation and um, showing something that was going on that made us, better than the guy next to us in the booth at the home show. Home shows have worked for us. Um, Yelp campaigns have worked for us. But then again, you know, in every area, we talked about this as well, it, it depends on what your demographic is and what they're using in that area. Um, and what we do is we, we take a little money, we put it into that campaign, and then we test it. We do, and this is not a, you know, butt kissing session for service time, but one of the reasons we went over to Search Titan was because of tracking those calls so well and putting the marketing and um, dollars and tying them to the revenue coming in from every campaign that we do. So we'd test something and run it and, and see if it worked. 
um, five years ago in Fresno. Um, Yelp was not working, but it was working really well in, in San Diego because people in San Diego were using it. Um, nowadays in Fresno, Yelp ha happens to be working very well. Um, but along those lines of point of differentiation, before we put money into Yelp, we had to say, all right, how are we going to look different on Yelp? How are we going to show up so that, you know, we're not just sitting next to the next guy with his his campaign that's coming in. And so we decided, well, if we're going to go into Yelp, we better have the most ratings. We better have the highest star rating of anyone. And we, we really attacked that before we spent any money on, on Yelp. At home shows, we found odd campaigns to run. Um, one of them that worked really well for us, we came out and told people, we'll pay you to put in your air conditioner. And they kind of looked at us really weird and, and you know came over and wanted to know what, what's going on. Um, another time we called it the Christmas cash program. But what we did was is we went and we found, you know, going into our off season, if we we're gonna have a home show that was in our off season and in the air conditioning industry we're just desperately trying to fill up that those gaps in the off season when it's seventy degrees outside in Fresno and no one cares about their air conditioner or their heater. Um, and we said, Okay, what is it gonna cost us to put in an AC system net profit wise, after we cover our overhead, after we cover our cost of sale, what is it? And it came out to about five grand. And um our average ticket was much higher than that. Obviously, we we don't want to be selling things for a zero dollar net profit, but in the off season, it'd be fantastic if we could break even. So we said, this is what we'll do. If it costs us five grand, let's run a campaign for sixty five hundred bucks, and we'll tell them it's a sixty five hundred dollar AC system, and they're going to come in, they're going to sign up for financing, uh, no money down, and once they get approved, we're going to give them a thousand dollar cash back rebate. And so these people would hear this: look, you're going to come, you're going to sign paperwork. You're going to get approved for financing. We're going to hand you a thousand dollars. Install your system. You have no payments for. I think at the time it was 18 months, and um, no interest and no payments for 18 months. And you're going to start saving money on your energy bills right away. So at one time we did it in the fall in Fresno. It's perfect weather in November. Um, we ran that in November. We sold more systems in one November than we sold in June, July, and August combined. And my competitors were freaking out about it. They were angry. And our customers were happy because they were getting a thousand bucks in cash, basically interest free to spend on their, you know, uh, Christmas presents. And they were planning on getting their um, tax rebate back in April. So they figured, what do I care? I can get it now. And uh, my competitors, when they're angry at me, said, there's just no way you can be doing it for this cheap. I can't believe this. With all the regulations in California and all the testing that we have to do and all that stuff, it costs thousands of dollars just to get through the permit process. Um, and I laughed to myself and because I said, you know, you guys are right. I'm not making any money on this. And they shook their heads thinking, why are you doing it then? And I thought, well, because normally I lose 100 grand in November and now I lost nothing. And so I'm 100 grand ahead um, because I, I was able to cover my costs in that off season. And that led to we ended up going 22 months in a row without taking a loss in books, um, which in our area is is huge because in central California when you're selling heating and air to people that don't need heat, heating and air you know for six months out of the year it's it's tough three months in the spring three months in the fall so yeah I'd say lots of campaigns can work it's just what are you offering that's different and and making it better than the guy that's sitting next to you running on the same medium Wow, thank you so much for sharing, Tom. First off, I have to say props to you because that Christmas cash campaign was brilliant, right? You're doing it in November, which is normally a slow month. You know, you're making it so it's a $1,000 bucks back in cash type of bonus. You know, it's right, it's Christmas time is right around the corner. Thanksgiving is when you're buying all your Christmas presents. Like, that is so enticing. So, amazing there. But really just... You know, coming back to your earlier previous comments of saying, you know, find that point of differentiation. You know, be creative and have flexibility. I know Yelp didn't work five years ago where you are in Fresno, but it worked five years ago in San Diego. But, you know, kind of pivoting and being flexible and now, you know, you're on Yelp and that's amazing. Um, with your differentiation, with your flexibility, I think that's definitely a key to having that marketing and advertising success. I'd love to move on to the next question. You know, you guys have shared some of the best marketing campaigns. 
What about some of the worst campaigns or channels for getting new customers? So for us, definitely the worst campaign by far was where you buy the credits for a texting service and then you say text the word good to 4456 and you'll get a coupon and join a list. And we thought we could just capture all kinds of customers that way. Uh, we'd include it at the end of every message we sent to anyone. And I think in six months, two people did the code. So we paid for this service and spent all this time and it was just absolutely worthless. Uh, along the same lines, QR codes. Oh. I, I don't know anyone <laughs> that uses that for anything, especially on the side of a truck. Uh, personally, I think it's much easier to have a domain that's relatively easy to remember because opening your QR app and taking a picture to go to a website is just a ridiculous process. Oh my goodness. Um, a QR code. Wow. I, I can't say I've ever used a QR code, to be honest. I haven't. Uh, if you ask me to text, like text 455, you know, um, Lee's Air or Pipeworks, you know, I think I would do that. But to scan a QR code, that's a ton of effort. You know, think about your average person. You've got to download an app. You've got to open the app after you wait for it to download. You've got to scan it. And then you have to delete the app if you don't want it because you only have the iPhone 16 gig. Like, that's a lot of work. Yeah, and for years at every you know, marketing show and whatnot, they would tell you to put a giant QR code on the side of your truck. Oh, man. And then you spend all that money on truck wrap and design, uh -huh. and it doesn't work, so you have to rewrap them anyway. Ooh, that's a lot of money and a lot of work. Um, that's, that's kind of a funny story. Um, folks in our audience, please let us know if you have any questions at any time um, or even if you'd like to share one of your best marketing stories or one of your worst marketing and advertising stories. We'd love to hear it. Um, you know, This is a platform, this is a forum for um, everyone to share what they know. So any questions, any comments, any stories you'd like to share, please type them up. So what about you, Tom? We just heard about Andrew's um, QR story dilemma that didn't really work. Um, anything for you guys that you know was horrible and that you would never repeat again? <laughs> yeah, I think we run into one of those about once a week. Um, but yeah, I I'd agree with the QR codes. But in I think that sometimes we run campaigns and they don't work, and it's not because we it's it's a bad medium. Um, I think it's just what we're trying to sell or how we try to sell it on that medium just doesn't work. And a perfect example of that was billboards. Um, billboards are just, you know, you couldn't make any money on them. Um, we're tracking those marketing dollars very effectively, and, and we couldn't figure it out why, why we couldn't make money on them. And uh, Seth Godin is a awesome marketing speaker, kind of marketing guru guy. He's got millions of followers online, if, if you guys aren't. Sorry, Service Titan, I don't mean to be plugging someone else, but it's not a competitor of yours. So um, great, great speaker, and um, I'd highly recommend following his blog. But he, he made a good point. He said, you know, billboards, if you're doing something that's a demand service or a uh, necessary evil, so to speak, you shouldn't be using billboards. And air conditioning really is a necessary evil. People don't want to go buy a nice, new, shiny air conditioner um, unless they absolutely have to because it's broken. Um, so he said, think about what he pointed out. He didn't bring up air conditioning. He brought up um, hospitals. And he said, you know, Fresno Heart Surgical Hospital. I'm, I'm looking at, that's a real hospital in our town. They have, you know, billboards everywhere. And he said, how many people do you see driving down the road? They're thinking, man, I got an extra 200 grand in my pocket. I was really thinking I could use a heart surgery. I should call the Fresno Heart Surgical Hospital. And, you know, we kind of laughed about it. And because the reality is when you have a heart attack and they rush you to a hospital, um, I don't think that you're going to stop the uh, ambulance driver and tell him, hey, I'd really like to go to the Fresno Heart Surgical Hospital because I saw their billboard um, last week or whatever. It is. They're going to take you to wherever you have to go. And when you get there, if it's not the Fresno Sur Heart Surgical Hospital and a doctor diagnoses that you need to go into heart surgery, he's going to send you to wherever you need to right then anyway. And you're just going to be so happy to get surgery that, it doesn't matter. Well, same thing with air conditioning. When you have your air conditioner breakdown, you don't drive around Fresno in our town 
and look for a billboard with a phone number on it and write it down and, and call the number to buy a new AC unit. And I don't really care how good the deal is. Unless you happen to just get a phone call that morning and your husband or wife is at home and they said, hey, um, AC's out. You know, and you happen to see the billboard that day. It's just, it's just tough to do when you're doing a um, direct sale campaign, even if you have a thousand dollar cash discount or whatever it is. Um, but along came this uh, one manufacturing company that gave us a bunch of co-op dollars, and they refused to do any of the campaigns that we wanted to do that we could prove had returns. And one of the things that they did approve though was billboards. And I got very frustrated, and I said, "Look, this is just a waste of money." But if you guys are willing to waste your money and because you want to force me to put money into billboards for an air conditioning company, so be it. And we sat around in a marketing meeting and thought, well, let's not do a direct sale campaign, then let's do a branding campaign. And whenever we do branding campaigns, um, branding campaigns take a long time to see a return on investment. So you've got to really be in it for the long term and they better be cheap because you're going to be spending a lot of money on it for a long time before you can prove whether or not it works. Um, so we sat around and thought, what would just get people to remember us and that's really what a branding campaign is about let's sear that brand in their conscience and um, we said all right let's let's do something funny and let's first of all leave the phone number off the billboard because no one drives down the street and says oh my gosh look at that billboard I, I want an AC unit and they pull over and write the phone number down like you know Andrew was saying no one stops and says oh my gosh there's a truck with a QR code let's stop and pull out our phone and oh wait it's moving let's start chasing it down the freeway um, it's just not going to happen. So we took the phone number off the billboard. We put on a um, funny slogan, um, and they got more and more funny as we went. We actually hired a bunch of, um, well, I say hired. I got a bunch of my buddies and told them that I would get Applebee's to uh, cater us a bunch of uh, appetizers in our conference room if they came in and just started making jokes about our company. And they were more than happy to do it. We sat around a conference table, and I put out a tape recorder and got a pen and paper out and took notes. And, um, yeah, they talked about how we don't have a good slogan and uh, that no one really knows us for anything and that kind of thing. And, and they had a good laugh about it. And so our first billboard said, sorry, we couldn't come up with a good slogan, Lee's Air, and just put it on the freeway. And it was a super cheap spot, but there were hundreds of thousands of people driving by. And lo and behold, our terrible marketing campaign turned into something where we had people laughing and calling us. And it said leesair.com on the billboard because that's our logo. And so they actually went to our web page, got our phone number, and called us from there. And I had one guy calling us laughing saying, look, I, this actually happened twice. So I don't even need an AC unit. That's just hilarious. Um, I love seeing those things. And so we kept putting them around town um, just in cheap areas. We talked to the advertising agency and said, look, when you've got billboards that – you can't fill. Just let us know. We'll give you, you know, a couple hundred bucks a month to put them up when they're typically five thousand or eight thousand dollar campaigns, and we'll pay for um, the actual printing. And at first they they scoffed at it, and I said, well, okay, that's fine, but you can just put up a billboard for, you know, just leave it there for nothing, or you can get a few hundred bucks from me. Um, and the reality was, when we were running that branding campaign, it didn't matter where they were in town because it's just branding. We're just trying to get our name out there. And so we had a whole list of things that we set up. One said, get your air did, because get your hair did was a big thing in Fresno at the time. And get your air did went in. It actually got nominated for an Addy Award nationally. Um, we ran, a, yeah, uh, one says, heat your heart out. Oh, another one said, we can't help you find love, but we can fix your furnace, um, leaseair.com. And anyway, I, I know that was kind of a campaign that worked, but in the beginning, it, it was just a dismal, failure um, because putting up something of hey you know get your uh, AC unit you know for whatever amount off when people don't necessarily need AC units right then just just kills your your bottom line um, but um, turning that into something else that does work or coupling it with something that does work for instance if you know um, yeah, QR codes, I can't find a good way to use them. But uh, <laughs> if, if there was a text campaign that might work, it'd have to be coupled with something else. I mean, you'd have to do it with, hey, we're running this um, Facebook, you know, uh, contest right now. If you see our truck, there's a number on it, and text it in, you win $500 or something like that so they can find you. And even then, it's not really a direct advertising campaign. It's got to be a branding campaign. But um, anyway, 
Um, other things that didn't work for us, uh, phone book was terrible. I, uh, and I've had people in certain parts of the country tell me it works. I've never had anyone show me actual data showing that it works. Um, and, uh, maybe there is somewhere. And like I said, each, each, you know, location is different, but I just bought another company a little while ago. It was a home, another home services company, a pest control company, and they were absolutely terrified of getting rid of their phone book and, uh, yelled and screamed at me, said all their clients are over 65. Um, I showed them data in our area showing that people up to age 80 in our area, 80% of them use the internet now. Um, so it's pointless. Even if you have older, you know, um, older clientele, um, direct mail hasn't really worked for us that well either. Uh, we've tried and tried and tried and, and people have told me, Hey, I've, I ran this direct mail campaign and I only spent four grand. I brought in $20,000 worth of revenue. And I'm thinking, wow, that's 20% marketing expense. That's really not something even in our, our ballpark. Um, we can't really do that. So, yeah, uh, phone book, direct mail, QR codes haven't worked for us. We tried it. Um, and we had the same story that uh, Andrew had about having to rewrap your trucks. Any any campaign that we run, we because we're, you know, looking for failures, we try to run just a little bit. Uh, we only ran on a few trucks, but it still cost us. 10 grand to rewrap those trucks. So it was a expensive, uh, expensive punch to the gut. What a great story, Tom. You know, I love, I love the, the campaigns. Get your air did, heat your heart out. Um, we can't help you find love, but we can fix your furnace. Um, sorry, we couldn't think of a better slogan. I love that you guys were um, you know, took a chance on those. You know, you tried something you new. You tried something non um, non traditional, out of the ordinary, um, and you know, got it got some traffic that way. I love, I love that. Um, more so, you know, I think it's really interesting that you did some kind of analysis of the demographic, right? You know, um, folks that are over eighty. You know, eighty percent of them use the internet. Like everyone's on the internet. We can't do phone books anymore. We can't do this direct mail thing. This QR code doesn't work. Um, I think that's really important to understand your audience, understand your demographic. Um, Fresno isn't like every city out there, but um, I think there's a lot that we can learn from what you did. Um, and I think everyone should really understand their demographics like you guys did. So great job with that. You know, love, love the billboard ideas. Um, and I love that you got your friends, you know, in a room together eating some Applebee's and just brainstorming. Those were free marketing consultants that you that you quote unquote hired or bribed with Applebee's. Awesome. Let, so let's um go to the next question. How do you measure the ROI of your marketing and advertising campaigns? Andrew, can you help us with this one? No problem. So originally, I'm gonna say five years ago, we were on pen and paper. So when it comes to measuring your ROI of a campaign, it's obviously a little difficult. So it used to be all anecdotal. You know, you would say, this customer spent $25,000, so clearly this campaign is good. We'll keep doing it for two more years. Uh, once you actually have hard data, it's a little easier to measure your ROI. You have to look at the total amount of time spent on that call. So not just the final job, where you sold this much and you attributed that to one call. You may have had the call come in for a repair, the guy went out, it actually turned into a lead for a new piece of equipment, the salesman went out and spent another you know, two or three trips trying to make the sale, and then that finally you have the install which lasts three days to actually put in the furnace. So your ROI is not based on those three days of install, it's based on the entire process so that you look at everything in totality. Perfect. Okay. And what about you guys, Tom? Um, yeah, along the lines of what Andrew was saying is that we had to really look at, you know, what we're selling on, um, on each individual marketing campaign because sometimes your ROI is going to be higher just because the gross margin on a given job that you're selling is higher and that campaign was targeted towards that type of job. Um, but if you're selling tune-ups, you're going to need a heart. You're going to need to look at okay, what was our true gross, gross margin on this, and what is the lifetime value of this customer, and um, was it worth running that campaign? Instead of, as Andrew said, hey, we only spent 
you know, two days on this install or we spent two hours on that tune-up or whatever it is. Or with plumbing, we do run plumbing. I haven't mentioned that a lot, but, you know, we only spent this much time on that plumbing inspection and we, we did X amount of revenue. We're great. But, okay, we really also look at um, applying net profits or applying overhead to each individual man hour so that when we go out, we find out what was our net profit on a given campaign. And that takes into account the guy's time in the field, the overhead associated with, you know, answering X amount of phone calls and everything else, um, and then collecting in the end, you know, what if we had some bad debt on this particular campaign because we're advertising to an area of town that has, uh, every town's got it, that notorious, uh, you know, um, guy that skips on this bill, um, or gets to the end of the job and refuses to pay and complains about everything that you did on it. But that's really... Um, how we're measuring our ROI. Um, as Andrew said, we used to be on pen and paper, um, and this isn't a butt kissing thing for Service Titan either, but that was another reason why we got on board with Service Titan because we want to know exactly each campaign, how many dollars did that customer give to us, not how many calls did we get from a certain campaign. I don't want to hear, oh yeah, we ran, you know, we got, we ran this campaign and we spent 10 grand and we got 300 phone calls. Well, one of those times we actually ran one of those, and before service time, we thought it was doing a great job, and it was actually a direct mail campaign. And after we had service time, we realized that most of those calls coming in were in our area. People hate paper, and so they would call in basically telling us never to send them anything ever again. Um, and so the campaign was a dismal failure, but we weren't really tracking, you know, actual ROI. We were tracking how many calls we got. And we weren't tracking, you know, total dollars spent on it. We were just, how many calls did you get? Um, with service time, it's a lot different. We can see exactly how many revenue dollars came in. And if you're using it properly and associating your costs with it, you can also see how much in costs you spent on each given job. And so you get a real ROI on your um, marketing dollars. Wow, Tom, that's a really important distinction, right? How many calls are we getting in that are converting and how many calls are we getting in where people are complaining or people have questions or where it's not booked um, and the fact that you can track it now and you actually know like hey this campaign is working this direct ma mail campaign didn't work at all people just called to complain to say hey stop mailing us paper like that's a big difference and I'm glad that you guys can differentiate now with service time because you know we hate seeing wasted marketing dollars or People just don't know where their marketing spending is going to. That's one of the biggest things. You know, we talk to a ton of contractors, to a ton of owners, um, to a ton of general managers, um, and I always ask them, you know, how are you guys doing in marketing? Um, what are you spending your marketing on? Um, how is marketing looking this month? And they're like, oh, it's it's going well, and you know, they, they don't know the specifics of it. So I love that, you know, with Service Titan and in your experience. Um, and with Andrew, you know, you guys knew the specifics going in, going out. You know, what is going in, what is working, and what are we getting out of it? So moving forward then, is there a benchmark for customer acquisition costs, and does it differ by channel? It definitely differs by channel. Uh, I'd say the highest is probably pay-per-click, um, unless you're doing a substantial direct mail and only get you know, one person, then that might throw you off. Really, you have to look at how many free customers can you get, and, and by free, really, sometimes people use the word earned, but if you have a referral program, we had one, uh, just for example, where we would give you $50 for any t appointment that we booked off that referral, and if we sold a system on the referral, we gave you $250. So if you're looking at customer acquisition costs, and you're getting this brand new customer and you only had to pay the person referring them $50, that's what it costs you to get the customer. So that's gonna be your lowest way to acquire customers. Um, the more expensive ways, obviously pay-per-click and any kind of TV is also very expensive. So you kind of have to look at, like Tom was saying before, the branding, the lifetime value of that customer uh, you know, a phone book customer usually calls you for something they need right then and there, and there's no type of stickiness with your brand. Versus, if someone's seen your commercials forever and they decide to start using you, that might be a little bit more of a substantial relationship. And then, obviously, referral is the strongest relationship. So, 
the type of customer and the amount of money you can expect them to spend and the lifetime they have with you is going to change drastically. Stickering equipment is huge. So anytime you install anything, put your company stickers all over it. So that way when they sell the house and the new homeowner comes in, water heater's not working, they walk up to this giant silver thing and see your company's name right there, so they call you. Uh, so stickers are going to cost you, you know, one to two cents per sticker. So that's really a fantastic acquisition. Okay, that's a great idea, Andrew. Um, stickers. You know, stickers are so easy to print. You can print them at home with your printer. You know, you can buy a, a pack of those stickers um, at Walmart, at Target, for less than 10 bucks. And you can stick them on everything that you own, you know, every piece of hardware, um, anything that you give to a customer. And I love it, you know, when they move out, when a homeowner moves out, the sticker is still there. And they're going to trust that whoever put it in will do the best job in taking care of it and that they know the complete history of the piece of equipment. Um, I also love what you talked about with the referral program. You know, $50 per referral, and then if you sell a system, it's $250. I think with that, you get, you know, the word of mouth, there's that trust, there's that social proof, there's, there's, there's just this deeper, more intimate level of trust that because my friend, you know, Andrew told me to go there and Andrew likes them, you know, I won't be cheated. You know, they won't overcharge me. They'll do a really great job. So I think that's really important to remember. Um, and and those, I think that's really low-hanging fruit, so things that we could knock out and implement immediately. What about you, Tom? You know, tell me about what you consider um, the benchmark for customer acquisition cost in. Does it differ by channel for all the different marketing things that you guys do with your funny billboards and such? Yeah, um, obviously they, they definitely do. And first of all, I want to thank Andrew for uh, going first on all these so I can sit here and think about all the things I'm going to say. And uh, I want to apologize to everyone else listening that they hear my blabbering on. But uh, I'll just give you real numbers. Um, last year, our cost to, uh, if we look at just total marketing dollars spent versus how many you know maintenance customers we picked up that are um, signed on, it cost us about $221 if, per customer. But if we look at total customers we brought in, it costs us about seventy dollars to bring on a customer, seventy-one dollars. And the campaigns range from about forty or fifty bucks all the way up to about um, three hundred dollars. Uh, well, actually, we had a couple of campaigns that ran to sell equipment where we we're approaching the six or seven hundred dollar range um, to pick that customer up. And um, it just depends on on what we're doing. But the point of it all is, is that just to know your customer acquisition costs and know exactly where the money is going. Um, I know that in the industry, they say if you want to grow um, aggressively, you should plan on spending 8 to 10% of your um, revenue on marketing, and you should plan on that. And by aggressive growth, they mean 15 to 25% increase in sales you know, year over year. Um, if you're planning on just maintaining or going slower, you're looking at four to six percent. Um, at least those are the benchmarks that I hear all the time when I'm hearing consultants speak and things like that. I don't really subscribe to that at all. Um, last year we spent 2.6 percent. Well, two years ago we spent 1.8 percent in marketing and we grew 60 percent. Um, last year we spent 2.6 percent in marketing and we grew 87 percent. Um, you can kind of just wipe away those general ideas of what people think you need to spend in marketing to get a lot of customers. Um, as long as you're running tests, seeing what, what brings out, you know, customers and, and what doesn't, and then cutting off everything that doesn't work immediately or cutting off the things that just work but don't work well enough. Um, I love Andrew's idea on the referral process. We love referrals as well. $50 is a great customer acquisition cost. Unfortunately, in California, um, our lovely contractor state license board has pretty much outlawed any um, referral fees above $5. So you can literally give somebody a mug, and if it costs $6, you're technically out of compliance um, if it's a mug that has your name on it. But anyway, um, I I would just drive into that, especially in areas where you know that the referral thing is allowed. I I I push on that as hard as I could. It's something we did for a long time before um, being told we can't. Um, another thing to, to point out, and something that helped us a lot, 
and it really was really cheap to do. Is we have a university here locally in Fresno, and it's Fresno State. Um, if anyone saw football this year, I think they were one of the worst teams in in all of uh, NCAA football. But besides that, they had a, a decent business department, and um, we went in there, and I talked to the marketing professor or the dean of marketing, and he gave me a couple of marketing professors. I went to a few classes, and I said, "Look, guys," and I knew that these kids would come up with some crazy ideas and they also were you know really in tune with the things that are going on the technology that's out there that we could utilize and I said we're going to run a um, a uh, contest I'm going to give you $800 to first place 500 bucks to second place and $300 to third place and they all got the teams and I said you can do it alone you can break into teams whatever you want to do most of them want to get into teams of four or five, and they figured they'd split the prize money. And I said, you guys need to come up with um, ways to acquire customers and come up with a marketing campaign and a uh, marketing plan and bring it to me. And we're going to vote on what the best one is, and we're going to pay these out. So um, they just, they were stoked about it. They got all excited. They came in and interviewed me and um, a couple other people within the company and tried to learn everything they could about air conditioning. Um, and now, granted, a lot of them were silly questions. They were just college kids. You know, they didn't have a lot of experience in real business. Um, they come up with some pretty just crazy stuff that you had to weed through. But the bottom line was, I spent let's see, eight, five, about uh, 1,600 bucks, um, and I got a whole stack of probably 20 different groups between the two or three classes we went to. I can't remember how many classes it was. Um, and just packed with marketing ideas, campaigns. They went and interviewed every radio station and TV station and billboard company and um, SEO company asking about their rates, what could they do for us, what ideas they had, that kind of stuff. They compiled them all into these binders um, and they just came up with just just probably hundreds and hundreds of marketing ideas and how to do them. Facebook um, contest ideas, um, just you name it. And it took us probably three days just to go through them all and take all the ideas down. We obviously just paid them out their, their prize money and said thank you and moved on. Um, the funny thing is, is a year later I ended up hiring one of the guys that was one of the winners and he's at our company now, one of our, our star employees as well. So it turned into a um, acquisition opportunity for employees. But because those college kids are there, they can even do things like, well, track what are your current customer acquisition costs. They can dive into your data and spend hours and hours and hours for next to nothing and come up with new ideas on how to get that cost, cost of customer acquisition down and how to bring new customers in. And if you're sitting in a university town or just somewhere near one, You've got this awesome opportunity, and they're more than happy, and the teachers love it because they get the students get real world experience. So that's something that just really, really helped us a lot. What a phenomenal idea! You know, taking, um, really giving the the kids an opportunity to have this kind of capstone project where they get to, you know, really solve a real life business issue, right? You know, what are some great ways to market and get out there and get to customers? I love that idea. You spent, you know, $1,600, you inspired some kids, you taught them some real life lessons about how to get in there, get out there in the real world and, you know, find creative solutions. And, um, you know, it helps with career, uh, career growth, right? You were able to hire someone, one of the students in one of the winning teams. Um, what a phenomenal idea. I think, you know, many of us live in big cities where we have access to a community college, a local state school, um, a local university, um, and I know, you know, schools are always willing to to do these real life projects where they're able to help companies because that's, that's, that's really exciting for the students, right? Like, how does whatever I learn actually translate into the real world? So I love Love, love that idea. And that brings us um, into our next question. Um, you know, what are, I'm going to skip this question and come back because I like this question the best. We're on a roll. Um, what are some of the most creative hacks to marketing and advertising? 
Um, you know, you guys have shared, both of you, Tom and Andrew, just amazing stories. Um, but I'd love to hear, you know, are there any other creative hacks that you haven't shared with us? Andrew, do you want to take it? Tom mentioned this briefly, but I think the one of the most important things when it comes to marketing is to take advantage of co-ops. Uh, so most of the larger companies will give you money towards your advertising if you put their logo on it. So if you're doing a campaign to sell a new furnace, wherever your primary dealer is, whether it be Lennox or whomever, Lennox will usually pay for half of the campaign. So if you're looking at something like direct mail, where you're only expecting one to one and a half percent return on that um, of all the customers, you really want to bring that cost down as much as possible. So whomever relates to your ad, reach out to them and everyone I've ever dealt with has been more than eager to spend co-op dollars. That's a great idea, Andrew, kind of sharing that responsibility um, and you know being able to join forces and um, do things together. I love that idea. I think that's an easy thing. I think there are certain partners that are always willing to really just jump on that and jump on board and get their name out, their presence out. Um, so I definitely encourage folks to reach out to some of the partners that they work with constantly to be able to do so. Um, what about you, Tom? What are some other creative hacks? I know you have a book of um, 20, 30, or 20 different groups that have submit, submitted you know, a slew of ideas and just binders and binders and binders. Yeah, I think that, um, well, there's a few of them that worked really well. One of them, you know, the funny thing is sometimes it has nothing to do with going for a main campaign. One of them that worked the best for us was we did a um, video on the culture of our company, and it's on YouTube right now. If you type in Lee's Air Company Culture, it'll come up. And we hadn't even really pushed our company culture that much yet. We just had a few things we could talk about in the video. But um, we made a video about our company culture and, and – what we do there and it was basically because we we're trying to hire people um, and we talked about how great it is to work at Lee's we had a, uh, a pool table in our comp we put a pool table in our conference room it has a top on it that you can take off so you can use it as a conference table or it's actually a full-size pool table when you take the top off we put a vending machine in our office the funny thing was is that um, we we're always leaving Rice Krispie treats and candy bars and that kind of stuff at the front desk that guys could take before they went into the field and nothing, no one ever said anything about it. And then we um, bought a vending, a used vending machine for 150 bucks and we put it in the office and we put all the food in there instead and just marked everything as free. And all of a sudden everyone was talking about how awesome it is that we, you know, give out free stuff to our employees and have a free vending machine in our office. I, it literally cost me the exact same amount of money except for the extra 150 bucks I had to pay for the machine. And then we, um, we, filmed a video with our people in it talking about how great it is to work there. And we put it on Facebook and we boosted it for 800 bucks. And we wanted, the idea was is that the people in the video um, would have friends that are in the industry. And when those guys that are in the video obviously would want to share it on Facebook, um, we were thinking we might get, I don't know, four or 500 views of the video. Uh, but we really needed to hire people and we really wanted to get the word out there about how great it is to come work at Lee's. Um, as most companies have an issue with um, with finding good talent, we had that same issue. Uh, we got 62,000 views. We spent 800 bucks boosting it. Um, 62,000 views of people that viewed it for more than 15 seconds. Um, it turned out to be a fantastic marketing campaign. Um, people were calling us, asking us about um, our college program. We, we offer um, tuition reimbursement, things like that. People were calling us. They wanted their um, spouses to come work for us, and they weren't even people that wanted to work for us. Um, I had people lined up outside my door that had no history in the air conditioning business that wanted to meet and come work for us. And then it turned out to be this great um, word in the community about how great it is to come to, to work at Lee's. And we had people buying air conditioning equipment that said, before I buy, I want you to prove that you actually do what you said. And we had to show somebody our official uh, handbook that shows that we actually do give all the employee benefits that we said we did in the video. And I was just kind of laughing to myself because it was super cheap. It really got the word out there about our company and uh, who we are. Um, since then, we've put a lot more into um, company culture. We bought those 
a couple of uh, electric massage chairs that you get in that massage your arms and feet and legs and back and all that stuff. Um, put it in our office for our guys to come and use in the mornings and office staff to use during their breaks. Um, we put Xbox and PS4s in the in the main area. We bought big flat screen TVs. I mean, and it only cost me an extra nah, ten or fifteen thousand dollars this year um, to do it, which was way cheaper than you know almost any marketing campaign I ran, and uh, just really got the word out there about this stuff. So it was it was one of those things that we kind of stumbled upon, but really, I mean, no other company is doing it. Definitely a big point of different differentiation, uh, but also just more marketing hacks is just try anything. I mean, um, I actually had to hire a marketing person uh, a couple of months ago and they had no experience in marketing and they weren't even applying for the marketing position. And she said, I, are you sure you want me in this position? I said, absolutely. She said, but I don't know a thing about marketing. I laughed. I said, well, that's good because I hate people that, you know, think they know everything about marketing and I can teach you, you know, what you need to know. She said, okay. Um, but, uh, the reason is, is the people that think they know everything about marketing are not willing to try these off-the-wall ideas and that really come in and bring in a lot of business without a whole lot of expense tied to it. And as long as you're willing to try those things and you find a way to test it and put a little money into it, you can always cut it off if it doesn't work. You know, who cares? You spent a couple of thousand dollars and it didn't work. You know, no big deal. Uh, but definitely before you try those, decide beforehand how much return you need to get on it to keep it going because once you get it going, sometimes you get emotionally attached to the marketing concept and then when it's not working, you want to keep it going anyway. But if you make that decision beforehand, it's either yes or no. We're going to bring in this much revenue or we're going to cut this campaign. You have a definite cutoff and then you cut it off if it's not working, go to the next thing. Um, usually people that came up with the idea for the marketing campaign become the cheerleaders of that campaign and want to keep it going. And I got one more thing for you. Also, bring all your staff and in on uh, marketing meetings. I mean, and just let them come up with the ideas. They've seen things. They know other companies out there. Um, they know what they're doing, and they tend to have the best ideas. So usually there's no less than seven or eight people in our marketing meetings, uh, a guy from sales, uh, a dispatcher, um, one of the field staff, and we have one of those marketing meetings every week. Hey, that's awesome. You know, I love that you're incorporating every everybody from all different offices and departments um, within the company because everyone does truly have a different perspective, right? Your sales guy, you know, knows your customer really well, maybe understands your behavior. Your technician is out there on the road. He sees what your competitors are doing, right? You've got your marketing expert. You've got all these different folks and bringing their perspectives together to really create, you know, non-traditional campaigns. You know, more so your video, just showcasing the culture and showcasing that, you know, you guys are people-centric and human-centric, um, that you're a human-centric company, people-centric company. You care about the people first. Um, I think that really resonates a lot with the audience and resonates a lot with folks in general, showing that you care about people with your massage chair, with your video on culture, with your vending machine and your free food. Um, you know, all of that really makes sense when, when I hear about it. Um, so I really appreciate you sharing that. I think that's a really great perspective. I'd love to dive just a very, very little, um, very briefly into how Service Titan has helped you, um, Andrew and Tom, improve your marketing and advertising. Andrew, do you mind starting? Sure. The number one thing for us is the integrated call system. So when you get the phone call in Service Titan, click on the little box. If it's an existing customer, it'll pull all their information. But as far as marketing goes, depending on what phone number they called, it'll know which campaign is being run. So usually the best way to do that is if you're on a bunch of different websites, um, you know, Angie's List, Home Advisors, whatever it might be, you can have that specific phone number be on that um, source. And then if they click into your website, have your website mirror that phone number. So now no matter where they go from that initial source, when they call you, It'll be coming from the number you have associated with Angie's List or whatever the platform is. A lot of times when you ask the customer where they found your number, they'll say the internet um, or Google. So then you might write down Google, and at the end of the year you think Google was your best platform, but really they're coming from other channels. Excellent. Okay. What about you, Tom? Um, 
that was definitely one of the biggest things. I mean, uh, well, Andrew and I both have a software background, and um, my general manager and I sat around looking through different software systems, and we couldn't find anything that actually integrates that phone system. Um, like Service Titan does, a lot of them, you know, you, you can assign tracking numbers and stuff, but they always just give you a list of how many calls you have, or you got to send your database off, and they try to crunch the numbers and figure out where these came from. But Service Titan gives you that in real time. Additionally, the Service Titan staff is really helpful with getting us um, access to back-end information if we need it that doesn't have a report for it, but wants some obscure report. And we've been able to find things that um, really give us data into, okay, how many new customers we get after this, how much was a repeat customer, you know, so on and so forth. Um, we spend a lot of time um, tracking that, and Search Titan has helped tremendously with that. Awesome. Thanks for sharing, Tom. Um, I wanted to move forward and tell you guys a little bit about our Titan of the Month. Um, and so our Titan of the Month, we really try to showcase um, a customer that's doing exceptionally well, that's really taken advantage of every piece of the Service Titan software, and just someone we're really proud of. Um, and so I want to I want you guys to keep in mind that on average companies grow only 25% on Service Titan, so that's 25% um, on the first year. But Aaron, our friend Aaron from Eco Plumbers, has actually grown 60% in the first year, and Aaron's out of Columbus. Um, we've got Eden, Eden from over in Orange County at Do It Right Plumbers. We showcased his success in October, and he had 109% in growth and revenue in just one year. So as you guys can see, anything is possible. And coincidentally, um, Jeff Bryant from Bryant Electrical Service also had 109 growth in revenue per year. And once again, this is just coincidental. Uh, there's no correlation between the two. December was a great month for Jeff Gamblin at Tiger. Plumbing, Heating, AC, and Electrical Services, where they grew 26% in revenue in their first year. Now, keep in mind that the average is 25% if, if you pull all of the Service Titan customers. Rosenthal Plumbing, that's David Rosenthal um, over in Santa Cruz. They've done a, wa um, a whooping 28% in the first year. Like, that is incredible. And so we're really proud of all our customers, and we just want to showcase them. We want to celebrate them for all that they're doing um, on Service Titan on their first year. So just really quick, you know, why do these companies grow on Service Titan? Well, most importantly, I think as you've heard from Tom and Andrew, that all data that you possibly will need is at your fingertips anywhere in the world with an Internet connection. So Service Titan Mobile, the dashboard that you see on the screen, it makes everything easy. Your numbers, you know, they're really, really easy for you to read and accurately report. You get to figure out, you know, what is my, re my missed revenue KPI? What are my conversion rates of estimates to book jobs by technician? How many calls are actually converted? What's the revenue attribution to every marketing channel? We don't want to waste money on marketing, um, as, as Tom and Andrew have told you. Let's get some real-time reports, right? How are things going in real time? There's intelligent dispatching, so we're not wasting time on the road. We have mobile sales tools for our technicians, right? Let's empower them with an ability to be able to to, to sell easily. Um, mobile customer experience tools for all technicians. So and this is really important to help you make data-driven decisions to manage and grow your business. With that said, you know, I asked my boss, I said, what can we do to really help motivate, help empower um, our folks here? And for the folks interested in Service Titan, please feel free to um, type in the questions box you know, interested in a demo so we can tell you exactly how to grow your business um, and your efficiency. So we're really, really, really excited to help you take your business to the next level. Um, so please sign up for a demo. Let's get started right away. Let us just show you. Let us learn about your business and help you see how you could grow it and how you could take it to the next level. So for those that decide that they want a demo um, and for those that decide that they want Service Titan, we want to fly you out to LA. So a free three night trip to sunny Los Angeles. So we'll give you two airline tickets, that's right. So maybe you and your husband, you and your wife, or you and your daughter, you and your son, um, you and your business partner, and three night hotel accommodations. Yes, that's three nights. So 
If you want to come Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, you're welcome to come. If you want to stay the weekend, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, we welcome you to the weekend. Come spend a half day with us here at Service Time. We've got over 190 employees. Come meet us all. Come get to know us. Come spend a half day in headquarters. And most exciting, we will provide a custom entertainment package valued at $500 for you. So while you're out here in LA, we want to make sure that you are having a blast. So we will set you up with some fancy, with some really great, beautiful accommodations. We will make sure that you have a blast. With that said, I'd love to take questions. If you have any questions, please feel free to type them into the questions box. Um, I have actually a question from Larry already. So Larry asks, what methods of motivating customers to go online and submit reviews on your service have been the most successful? Tom, I'd love to learn from you. You know, how do you motivate your customers to go online and submit these reviews? Um, <clears throat> Service Titan has an integration with um, a company called Review Buzz. And we've used a few, we've used Customer Lobby, we've used uh, Nearby Now, and we've used Review Buzz. And by far, we figured out a way to use it. Review Buzz with Service Titan has been extremely helpful to us. We started using Review Buzz in April of last year. And so it's a little under a year. We had 23 Yelp reviews at the time, and now we have 155, I think, that are actual um, recommended reviews. On Google, I think we had 30 or so Google reviews on Google Places, and now we have 130 of those um, just in that less than a year. And the company's been open for 30 four years or something, I don't know, 35 years, I guess I should know that. Um, but um, it's been really helpful. What it does is, is the guys go in, they have a, a card that comes with their um, um, with their subscription to Review Buzz. It costs us about 350 bucks, and we have about uh, 48 employees at the company right now, um, about 30 field staff, and each field staff person gets their own card. And it has their name on it and has a link to review buzz that you'd have to write in. But that the point is not to use that card. They give it to the customer and say, hey, my boss really appreciates hearing about how I did. It comes up in my yearly review. Um, I'd appreciate if you tell him how I did. Um, and we found that the customers don't really care to help the company. They really don't. Um, they do care about helping the employee that they just made friends with in their office, in, in their house, I mean. Um, so that person says, hey, you know, let's say the guys, you know, we have a plumber named Ebert. Ebert's really awesome. I really love that guy. He really helped me out. You know, I called and I had a backed up toilet at 9 o'clock at night and he rushed over here, you know, out of the goodness of his heart. They don't even think that, you know, hey, somebody had to answer that phone and uh, <laughs> wake up and, and, and get him out there. But anyway, um, that customer will then... Um, not only have that card with them so they can go online, but they also get on their invoice from Service Titan and their email from Service Titan, it has a link to Review Buzz. So now they're getting two hits with that. And they can just click on the link and Review Buzz says, How did you rate you know their service? And if the customer puts a nine or a ten and that's set up by us, it'll take them over to another page that says, Awesome, do you have do you use Yelp or Google or Angie's List or HomeVisor, whatever, you know, Better Business Bureau. If you use any of these, please click on them. And if they click on one of them, it'll take them, you know, in this case, Yelp. If you click on Yelp, it'll take them directly to Yelp and ask for their sign-in and, and type up the review. If they, instead, if they get that first screen and it says rate them on a scale of 1 to 10, it says an 8 or lower, it'll take them to a separate page that says, we're really sorry to hear about that, you know, please um, please give us information about what happened, what went wrong. That email gets sent to our office and our office calls them back and tries to rectify the situation before they go online and tell everybody about how nasty it was. Um, that's really helped us to mitigate the bad reviews and bring in the good ones. And I mean, literally across the board, I mean, we never had anything on the Better Business Bureau before. Um, we never had a bad review, but no one really uses it. Now we have 60-something reviews on the Better Business Bureau in just the past year. Um, and our, we have hands down the most reviews in our area with the highest rating. And really integrating review buzz with Service Titan was a gigantic help of, for that. By the way, guys, just so you know, we do not get paid to talk to you about this or to basically, well, at least I don't get paid by Service Titan at all to tell you about these things. So it's not 
I'm not telling you this to try to sell software or anything like that. It truly is what we've used and, and how we've used it to better our business. Thanks so much for sharing, Tom. I think that's amazing. You know, it's it's recognizing that our customer, that your customers are focused on your technicians, that if they can do anything to help the technician, that they will do it. Um, I think that's a really important distinction, you know, the technician and the company, um, and, and really being able to understand that and really making sure that we have the technician ask at a very personal level, you know, hey, can you do this for me? It really helps me with my year end review, or it really helps so that my boss knows I'm doing a good job. I love that. That's super helpful, and that's something that we can really tell our techs um, um, to start to start saying. Quite frankly, well, it looks like we don't have any more questions, and it's 11:08, so we're a few minutes late, and we're running over. I want to be respectful of everyone's time. Um, if you have any questions, um, we are happy to stay on. Um, stay on the webinar and answer them. If you're interested in a demo request, we will also stay on and have the chat box open for a few more minutes. Um, so you can ask any questions and you know ask for the demo request and we can set that up for you. I want to thank you, Tom and Andrew, so much for your time and your expertise. This was incredibly helpful and I know that our viewers um, and our attendees have a lot that they can take away and really start to implement right away. Thank you for having me. Thank you.